You people are crazy. When I build a PC using AMD's GPU, you people are like, Vimal bro, why did you go for that? We are not sure about the driver stability or productivity performance is not up to the mark. At the same time, when I build a similar configuration PC with Nvidia's GPUs, some of you comment saying Nvidia GPUs are quite expensive. Competitor GPUs offer similar performance for less price. What the heck? What do I even do? Like see, before I do a PC build or configuration, right? Obviously, I've done a bit of research, right? I will choose a company based on the budget I have, price factor, or maybe I have some sort of video theme or video concept, right? So make sure to actually see the video's title and also check out the performance till the end. And then let me know your feedback in the comment section down below. Keeping that aside, there is one more thing I want to bring to your notice. Our videos actually get like really good views, guys, but you people are actually forgetting to like the video. That is the reason I'm reminding you, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel, guys, because as I've told you recently, I'm planning a lot of interesting stuff for you people. I'm not sure if you've seen my recent videos. I want to do a lot for my audience and subscribers. There are so many people out there who cannot actually spend amount or maybe they cannot buy stuff. So I want to do something from my side. I can even do like, you know, subscriber builds for my audience and stuff like that. But we are still not there at that level, guys. If you can give me a little bit of support and love, you know, like how you usually do, but a little bit extra. Maybe, you know, like this video, share my videos with your friends. And once we get that desired milestone and we reach that, bigger audience level right i will do so much for you people that you cannot even expect guys you know so it's gonna be very interesting in the coming few days especially in 2024 so first of all make sure to like this video and also hit that notifications bell icon on so you can receive all the latest updates on the channel today's video is going to be very interesting nzxt has recently launched some of their new products in the indian market guys especially their all new dual chamber case the h6 flow rgb edition this is a compact dual dual chamber case that actually offers a beautiful panoramic glass view. The tempered glass on the front of this case actually extends all the way to the side and gives you beautiful aesthetics. So this is what we'll be using in this video for our build. And obviously it will be like an all NZXT themed gaming PC only. And initially I actually wanted to do this like a 13th gen i5 build because as I've told you this is like a mid-range segment gaming PC. But unfortunately i5 13600K is still quite expensive. CPU alone is around like 30-32,000 in the Indian market. So I had to scrap that idea because it was not fitting in our mid-range segment budget. Instead, I went for AMD's Ryzen 7000 series uh, CPU, the Ryzen 7600, which is much more value for money and quite affordable, costs only around like uh, 20,000 rupees in the Indian market. And that is the reason we'll be doing an AMD build. Now talking about the motherboard, obviously for the 7000 series CPU, you would lean like a new B650 or 600 series motherboards, right? So I am going for a B650 motherboard, which is like quite affordable and fits in your budget. You can even go for slightly even more affordable variant that costs only around like 12 13000 rupees guys all the links will be available in the description box below good thing is this platform also supports next gen features like ddr5 pci gen 4 and all the latest hardware upgrades so it's like a really good configuration i would say and you'll obviously get to check out the performance gaming productivity everything in this video now talking about the cooler part for this cpu right a decent air cooler would be like more than enough we have a new affordable solution from nzxt this is a T120 RGB air cooler and comes with a beautiful 120mm ring lighting RGB fan on the front side and is available in both black and white edition finishing as well. Chunky block of heatsink is also there with direct contact technology, four heat pipes are there. So this is what we'll be using to keep this Ryzen 7600 temperatures in check. Now coming to the GPU part, as I've told you, this is going to be like a really good mid-range segment gaming PC. So obviously we are going for something like a newer gen platform, RTX 40 series only and the one I have chosen is RTX 4060 Ti from Inno3D. Value for money and offers excellent gaming performance. You can even do up to like 1080p and 1440p also and in certain titles you can even do ray tracing also. I'll show you the gaming performance in both Cyberpunk and these sort of AAA title games. You'll get to know what sort of performance you can expect in this configuration. Now moving on as I've told you DDR5 RAM obviously we're going for that only. You can go for any 16 into 2 32 GB DDR5 kit around 5200 megahertz more than enough for this setup coming to the power supply as well power supply also we have something new from nzxt again this is also like an affordable lineup this is their all new c750 bronze edition 80 plus bronze edition power supply so this is also something we'll be testing out in this video so that is basically the whole configuration and setup we'll be going ahead with let's quickly get started with the assembling
All right, about an hour later, we are finally done with building our PC. Assembling and installing the components was very easy. It hardly took around like 25-30 minutes, but connecting and setting up the whole seven fans along with their RGB lighting was the toughest part. What I've noticed is this H6 case didn't come with a built-in controller or RGB hub, so I had to use my own third-party hub to get all the lighting synchronized and also you know get all these seven fans started running. That was a bit of hassle, so this is something you can definitely keep in mind. But anyways, here's our very first look at a PC built using NZXT's H6 Flow RGB case and my god I have to say that is one beautiful looking gaming PC. I mean it has a very unique structure I've told you right this is a dual chamber compact mid tower case and has a trapezoidal sort of shape with a panoramic glass view extending all the way from the front to the side and also if you can notice the case does come with three RGB fans included but they are placed at a very unique 45 degree angled position not the front panel. So this is for an optimum airflow and keep the thermal performances check you'll get to anyhow know the performance of this gaming pc in a moment in the meantime just have a look at these beautiful rgb shots cinematic shots and i hope you enjoy the video Okay, I know you people are excited about the benchmark, so let's quickly get into the performance part and check out how does this gaming PC perform. First of all, I've told you right, this is like a very well balanced mid-range gaming PC targeted for a 1080p ray tracing gaming or you can even do like 1440p level gaming experience as well. First of all, talking about the configuration, I've told you right, we are using Ryzen 5 7600 which is a 6 core 12 thread CPU with a max turbo clock of around 5.1 GHz and this is a very well balanced and value for money gaming CPU guys costs only around 20,000 rupees and offers excellent price to performance ratio and we are pairing this CPU with Nvidia's RTX 4060 Ti that offers 8 gigs of VRAM that too this one is from Inno 3D the twin x2 OC edition card offers like really good gaming performance quickly jumping into the Geekbench 6 cores here are the results we got a single core score of around 2687 and a multi core score of 12303 which is actually pretty good I would say for the price that you in investing. So not just gaming, you can even do a bit of decent productivity applications as well, creative sort of loads, maybe like, you know, Adobe applications, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, all of these will work very well on this system. So we will be playing a couple of AAA title games at different resolutions, 1080p, 1440p level with and without ray tracing and also DLSS technologies as well. So you people will get like complete information on the kind of performance you can expect over here. Starting off with our all time favorite Cyberpunk 2077. In this first clip, we will be playing the game at 1080p resolution and maximum ultra graphics with DLSS and ray tracing turned off. As you can see, everything set to max ultra psycho settings and DLSS and ray tracing are off right now. And we are right now in the middle of Night City peak scene, I would say. Lot of traffic, lot of character animations are there, movements. And there you go, on an average, we were actually getting around like 95 to 100 also, guys. Sometimes triple digit FPS at this sort of settings. Not bad buttery smooth gameplay even in cyberpunk 2077 as i've told you cyberpunk is a very graphic intensive game being able to handle this sort of game at such high frame rates you can easily play any sort of triple a title game on this system now let's actually increase a bit of pressure let's actually put a bit of load on the configuration by enabling ray tracing and dlss then we'll get to know the actual performance of this system so there you go in the second clip we're still playing the game at 1080p resolution only but ray tracing has been enable set to ultra okay now that is actually a bit of surprise look at the results over here you can check out the cpu stats at the top left corner and on an average even with ray tracing and dls is turned on we were getting around 120 125 fps on an average guys that is kind of crazy again though i do have to mention this whole magic is because of frame generation if you disable frame generation this will not be the result you'll get hardly around like 50 60 fps okay 1080p performance looks pretty good now now let's actually bump up the resolution to 1440p and see how does this rig handle this sort of configuration. 
Cutting directly to the chase, I have increased the resolution to 1440p and all the settings are still same as before, ultra graphic settings and ray tracing is also enabled and Nvidia DLSS and frame generation are on. And on an average, we were actually getting around like 70, 73 FPS guys, which is pretty damn good I would say for this sort of configuration. I mean it's a mid-range gaming PC yet we were able to play Cyberpunk at 1440p with ray tracing. What more can you ask for for this price point? excellent gaming performance i would say guys see as i've told you again just now if you're able to handle cyberpunk like this you can easily play almost 90 percent of the games out there keeping cyberpunk aside let's also test out one more game which is one of our classic favorites i would say spider-man remastered we are playing this game also at different resolutions starting at 1080p graphic settings are set to maximum ultra and right now in this first test ray tracing and dlss are off and as you can see really good frame rate results here also in this game we were getting around like 135 140 fps on an average muska gaming performance guys no lags no stutters anywhere this game also supports ray tracing so let's quickly enable ray tracing and check out how does the system handle that right now in this clip we only enable ray tracing dlss is off at 1080p resolution and on an average we were getting around like 65 70 fps because as i've told you ray tracing definitely puts a lot of load on the gpu and the frame rate has been reduced to almost half again you can definitely increase that frame rate by using dlss so choice is up to you in dlss also you get like multiple number of modes if you want to keep the quality settings or you want a balanced profile or maybe you just want like higher frame rate you can set it to perform more. Quickly having a look at the thermal CPU temperatures were fluctuating around 74-75 degrees centigrade after an hour of gaming session. Not within my expectations, I was ideally expecting around 64-65. Maybe that 120mm air cooler was not sufficient for the Ryzen 7600. I do know Ryzen 7000 chipsets run a bit hotter than usual but maybe this 120mm air cooler was not cutting in. Uh, we can offset the voltage you know slightly minus 15 minus 20 and that will definitely bring down the temperatures by at least least 8 or 9 degrees so that can definitely help but ideally maybe you can go for like a 240 mm AIO and that will definitely improve the overall thermal situation but again as I've told you the whole concept today was to build like a mid-range gaming PC and 240 mm air cooler would not fit in this budget that is the main reason we actually went for this 120 mm air cooler from NZXT. Well, that is pretty much it guys. I hope you got a clear understanding on the kind of performance you can expect from this all NZXT mid-range gaming PC build. It is definitely not just a looker guys, even the performance is also really good. So before wrapping up the video, let me quickly summarize the pricing details about this configuration and all the components I've used. Starting off with the CPU, Ryzen 5 7600 is available for only around like 20,000 rupees in the Indian market. And I would advise you to go for like an affordable B650M motherboard, maybe from Gigabyte there DS3H edition which costs only around like 12,500 rupees. Coming to the GPU, we have went with Inno 3D's RTX 4060 Ti 8 GB VRAM edition card, the Twin X2 edition and this costs around like 35,000 rupees in the Indian market. Talking about the RAM, you can go for any RAM 32 GB 16 into 2, uh, clocked at around 5200 MHz and this will hardly cost around like 6,500 rupees. And talking about the cooler, NZXT's T120mm RGB cooler is priced around 4,500 rupees. Their C750 80 plus bronze edition power supply costs around 6500 rupees and this brand new case from NZXT the H6 Flow RGV costs around 12000 rupees. And last but not the least do not miss out the SSD as well. I would advise you to go for like a minimum of 512 GB NVMe SSD that hardly costs around like 2500 rupees. So if you add up the whole total right the budget comes down to around like 99500 rupees guys. So this can be like a really good gaming PC under 1 lakh rupees. So what do you think about the configuration and the whole NZXT theme build guys? Share your thoughts and feedback definitely in the comment section down below. I'd love to read your thoughts. If you all enjoyed watching this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more such awesome videos. And I'll see you all in my next one.